States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Council made a motion on the work session minutes for November the 20th. Motion to adopt. Have motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Six with two abstention, with one abstention. Got it. <coughs> yes, sir. Need a motion on the regular council meeting minute minutes for the November the 20th. Motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. <coughs> Unanimous. Mr. Mayor, you're up. Thank you so much. If um, you don't know, look out the door and you'll see the holiday season is here. We're preparing for Christmas. Uh, next weekend uh, on Friday, we'll have the Christmas slash Camellia Bowl Parade. We'll have the two teams and the bands in town. Actually, we'll have two other bands because the two days later uh, on Monday, we'll have the Mississippi-Alabama High School All-Star football game in the same place uh, at Crampton Bowl and their bands will be here for the uh, parade on the 14th. And then at 4.30 on uh, Saturday, uh, the ESPN uh, Raycom Camellia Bowl uh, with Eastern Michigan and uh, Georgia Southern will be here. There's a lot of synergy between those two, so I hope you're planning to be there. and would encourage everyone else uh, to go buy a package or two so that we can have a full complement uh, of people. Um, normally, I do not necessarily do this, but something happened yesterday. Several things <laughs> happened yesterday, but the one that I wanted to bring to the council's attention, as well as the citizens, you know, we've been talking about our crime rate and how it is decreasing. Whether the perception is that or not, I don't know. But we had a national rating uh, organization, Wallet Hub, yesterday to send out uh, a press release articulating the top 200 or so cities in the United States relative to a number of factors, all of which had to do with safeness uh, in a particular city. And uh, while we'll show uh, some of that on the uh, board, if you'll ever get around to it, I am pleased to tell you that in Alabama, Montgomery was rated the safest city in the state of, in the state of Alabama and number 112 in the United States, ahead of Huntsville, ahead of Mobile and ahead of Birmingham. Now, we don't wish any of the rest of those any ill will, uh, but we're delighted that we're at the top, which just confirms uh, with uh, a national rating organization looking at a number of, of issues uh, that crime is in fact going down. It was down modestly uh, from 16 to 17. It's down 3% from 17 to 18, and we have a little ways uh, yet to go. So this is a tribute not only to our police organization, our public safety organization, but to the citizens. Because through our community policing, park walk and talks, and many other activities, whether it be youth uh, task forces that we have, whether we churches or organizations that are supporting youth activities, we're beginning to see in the community people calling us and saying, here, you need to know this A, B, C, and D. The unfortunate events that we had over the weekend, We've had people call us and say, hey, let me tell you about what I know and who, who's involved, et cetera, et cetera. And frankly, that's how we were able to make the arrest that we did today with the hit and run uh, individual uh, there on the, the, the bypass. So I wanted to share that good news. We've got a little more good news, too, if Mike would put it up there. Uh, I'm going to knock on wood, but we looked at the numbers uh, for November. Barry Crabb just brought those to me. 5.8% increase in our revenues from sales tax. As you can see, almost uh, a half a million dollars. In any one good year, we'd be up about two, maybe two and a half. And so one, one month, uh, we're up, and as you can see there, uh, we're up $700,000 year to date. Two months does not make a trend, but we have a lot of good things that happened, uh, that's gonna happen in December. Uh, we were thinking about what might have gone on uh, in the October time frame, which is the December, I mean the November number. Maybe Hurricane Michael, I hate to say that, might have had something to do with that. We had a number of people here. We've had a ton of tourism uh, because since May 1st, um, 
EJI at the uh, memorial as well as the museum, they've had close to 300,000 visitors, and they don't just go to that one venue or two venues. They go to our zoo, they go to our museum, they go uh, to Shakespeare and many of the other venues that we have. If you'll take to the next one, you'll see the lodging tax. Where's Dawn Hathcott? Dawn, you want to take a, a really bow? 41%, if you round it off, 40% up over $300,000 in one month. Our occupancy at hotels uh, is near that 80% level. Uh, that's good in and of itself, but that has those two hotels that will open up in the first quarter of next year. It has two more under construction and one or two more that we're talking about with the developers to either sell some property or to do a development agreement. Uh, this uh, is, is really good news to us. So now we go to the advertisers' community heroes. Uh, we have a, a hero uh, that's so well-deserving that I thought I knew who this individual was. Uh, I've never uh, had to use his services because he's a physician, he's a surgeon in the emergency room. But as I met him tonight, I recognized him, and I thought I did by the name. John Mark, Dr. John Mark Vermillion, was the uh, physician on duty when David Brown had his unfortunate uh, motorcycle accident many years ago. And frankly, Dr. Vermillion saved his life and the staff that was over there uh, doing that. So uh, we have a special interest in your, your honoring this tonight. So, bro, if you would come and uh, make that presentation and... And uh, Dr. Vermillion, we just thank you and uh, accept our appreciation for the job you did then and the job that you continue to do throughout the city of Montgomery and the surrounding region. Thank you. <coughs> Slow <on> water. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, good evening. I'm Bro Crift. I'm the editor of the Montgomery Advertiser. Uh, many of you all have seen me here before uh, for the community heroes that we do monthly. Uh, to support a Beasley Allen law firm, um, honoring people who don't necessarily go rec that go unrecognized and don't get the uh, accolades that they deserve for their contributions to who we are as a city and as a community. And this month, I get to honor our November hero, John Mark Vermillion. He is the doctor who started the trauma uh, center at Baptist South in 2005. It's really important. <laughs> Uh, for us to have a trauma center and to have a surgeon of his caliber in our community protecting us um, at our most vulnerable times. Um, that center started um, with only 500 trauma patients a year. I say only, that is a lot. But it has grown to 2,000 through his leadership, it has grown to have six nurse practitioners, two trauma surgeons, and three um, part-time trauma people as well. Um, I think about hoping that I never meet him in that situation, but I am thankful that this community has him for when we face those situations, because he literally has saved lives. Um, and I think he's done it because of what the nurses around him said, is because of that calm and steady demeanor that he has and he brings to that surgery room on a daily basis, even if it means 16 to 18 hours on duty, on call. We're lucky to have him here even tonight because it's one of his rare uh, nights where he is not on call. Um, but what I think also makes a difference is there, if you have read the story, or if you haven't, I encourage you to, because there's an empathy um, that he brings to that surgical room and he brings uh, to his patients, which is not something that is necessarily taught in medical school. I think it's something that's natural to him. In the story, he talks about key patients that he remembers to this day. And I thought it was very thoughtful. He talked about an insurance salesman who was in a traumatic auto wreck that, whose life was saved, and he went on to buy that business. He talked about a gunshot victim, a young man, who spent about two years in the hospital recovering from that gunshot, and now he leads a productive life. We wouldn't have those lives in this community if it wasn't for Doc John Mark Vermillion. I'll read you two quotes from the story that I think say a lot about him and what he means to us. He truly loves to serve his community. And then more importantly, I think the town, the county, the area is very lucky to have him. And because of that, and because he's here and he has started this program and continues to serve us within the hospital, he is our November community hero. Thank you.
Doctor, if you would join us. I know that you would uh, want to say a word or two, but uh, when you do that, then we'll make this presentation and get a picture with our city council so that when they call for an appointment, you will recognize them so you'll be able to see them. Very good. <laughs> Thank you all very much for the honor, and I appreciate it from everybody. Um, I want to start by saying this is the first time and probably the only time you all see me in a jacket. I'm usually in my scrubs. I'm very uncomfortable in front of people, and I'm certainly very uncomfortable in a jacket. Um, I think most importantly for this award, this is anything but a personal award. I appreciate my name being on the certificate, but the trauma program is so many sacrifices from so many people. I mean, I would say it's starting with administration from the hospital because trauma doesn't make money for a hospital. Trauma loses money for a hospital. So it's a significant financial commitment for them to take care of the community. So that's something that has been, was a vision before I got here, it's what got me here, but then it's also been the vision that, that has kept me here and kept us growing to become the trauma center that we've become as the other um, facilities around the area have backed down from trauma. And we're now one of the four major trauma centers in the state, thanks a lot to the Baptist administration. On top of that, requires a very active, very humble and sacrificing medical staff because trauma doesn't come between the hours of seven and three when it's easy to do work. Trauma comes, I was at the hospital from midnight till about 2.30 this morning operating on two gunshot wounds. And that's the nature of trauma and that's what we do. Um, so it takes a lot of sacrifice from the medical staff because it's not, most of trauma surgery is not something that a single surgeon can do. It requires lots of specialties involved. In addition to that, it requires a lot of expertise of nurses and nurse practitioners making personal sacrifices. And. Uh, Thanks to my family. Oh, wow. Michael and Bro, I, I know that you guys uh, take great pride in having this program this year. And I just asked Bro if, if it was going to be continued. We certainly want to be a part of that because it's the likes of Dr. Uh, Vermillion and many others that have been here over the last several months. That these are the unsung heroes, and people would never know about them unless they interacted with them. But now, a lot of people knowing about them. And Dr., we appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate the fact that uh, you care. You care about our community, and we, we thank you, and God bless you for what you've done. I have one more thing that uh, we want to say. Congratulations to the Montgomery Academy of Volleyball. We've done this now four times previously. This is our fifth time. Julie Gordon is, uh, in fact, the coach, and uh, she says it's not too often that we could do this. Um, the reason I wanted to do the volleyball team uh, at the end was I wanted them to experience what is good about Montgomery, to hear the good news about Montgomery, and to meet those individuals that make a difference in our community. Hopefully they will be inspired by this. We've done this before along the way, and while this is not the entire volleyball team, you got a lot of players who can play good volleyball, also play good basketball, so you got many of them uh, playing basketball. Michael has always has penned uh, descriptions, and if I may, uh, I have not seen this before, so let me read it, Julie. I apologize, Coach. But it says, Arthur Joyce Meyer once said, the eagle has no, speaking of eagles, both of the teams are going to play here in the Camille Bowl are known as eagles. The eagle has no fear of adversity. We need to be like the eagle and have the fearless spirit of a conqueror. The Eagles of Montgomery Academy followed her advice this season on the volleyball court. At last year's state championship, the team lost to Bayside Academy in an epic five-set match that gave Bayside its 16th straight volleyball title. 
That adversity set the stage for this year's, and indeed the MA Eagles embodied the spirit of conquerors. The team played in nearly 50 matches this season and notched a winning rate of 81%. Once again, the young ladies from MA found themselves in the 3A state championship match. This year, facing a tough team from Carbon Hill that had won 90% of their matches. Thanks to a balanced attack and gritty defense, the Eagles prevailed in three straight sets to claim Montgomery Academy's fifth basketball title in school history and the first since 2013. Julie Gordon is the coach, and Julie, if you would come and accept this, and then we will uh, hear from you, and then we'll give the certificates to the those that are here and give you those that, uh, that are not. So with our thanks and congratulations, and representing Montgomery well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't know I was going to have to speak tonight, but um, this is a great honor uh, for us to be here tonight. And uh, winning a state championship is not easy. And there are so many people that are involved in our program that, that have helped us get to this point. It's, it's the parents that, of course, took every front row seat here today. And, Rightfully um, so. Rightfully so. And it's, it's every one of these girls and the sacrifices that they make during the summer, going to camps, coming to the weight room all summer long. And it's just a great, a great atmosphere that we have in our gym. They work hard every day. They are just true uh, patriots of the sport. They love the sport and they love each other. And one of the things that Tomorrow night, we will share uh, stories and pictures and photos and, and videos at our athletic banquet, our volleyball banquet. And what the main topic that I'm going to talk about is a poster board that we started the very first day of practice. And the charge for the team was, how do you want to be remembered? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? And I want you to come up with one word or phrases that depicts our team. And there were, te there were words like leadership, selflessness, hardworking, um, empathy, all these things that all 15 of these girls displayed. And that's why we were successful. And it's, it's, it's not just always about winning and losing, but it's the relationships that I have with each one of these girls and that they have with each other. And, and fulfilling those, those concepts leads to success and, and the look and, and happiness on those faces. I'll never forget it. It's very special. Julie, may I read to you the certificate and then we'll get some photos with the young ladies as they come up and get theirs. On behalf of the citizens of Montgomery, congratulations on your 2018 3A State Volleyball Championship. By guiding your athletes to a fifth state title, for the girls' volleyball program, you are instilling lifelong lessons on the value of discipline and de determination. Today's students are society's leaders for tomorrow. As your athletes progress beyond the field of sports to pursue excellence in other realms, the traits that they have acquired on the, the volleyball court will serve them well. Again, congratulations on this noble achievement and best wishes for all your future endeavors. That says thank you for all that you've done. Thank oh, you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And if the uh, families of the uh, student athletes want to come up close for uh, the best picture angle, now's the time to do so. McCray Freeman. Sally Shigan. A member of the all tournament team, Grace Jackson.
another member of the all-tournament team, Brooke Horn. Another member of the all-tournament team, Mary Gray Turner. <clears throat> A senior, Roma Perney. Another senior, Ann Carlson Sylvest. <laughs> and our final member of the Alabama State Champion Volleyball uh, Tournament, senior Catherine Updegraff. Good, Mr. Yeah, President. Yes. Can I ask the mayor or you a quick question before we get started? Yes, sir. Mayor, do we, I, I got a letter in my box the other day about paving. I know we've talked about paving uh, Taylor Road from Vaughn Road out past Chantilly that way. Do we have a time frame or a time? April. Is that pretty? I, 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 I did not hear the question. Pa paving of Vaughn Road from uh, Taylor Road out. out. And uh, there was an extension on that back. Uh, they yeah, extended first that quarter. because of the first quarter uh, of next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was supposed to be by April. It was one. supposed to schedule. It's Chris, it's supposed to schedule in the fourth quarter, but the state moves the funding to that's the fine. first quarter. That's that's some, that's yeah, it's in process. Okay, thanks. Okay, Madam Clerk, first item. <laughs> Mr. President, I have one mayoral veto of resolution number two eleven dash twenty eighteen. Need a motion? Motion uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. If I may, Mr. President, I don't want anybody in this audience to think that I was vetoing uh, a, a, a resolution that is well intended and we all directionally have the same objective. Um, in this particular case, this is part of a bigger uh, view that we're trying to do on dilapidation and residents and how we control Reynolds and things of that nature. Uh, there was some confusion 
uh, in the, the verbiage, but more than anything else, the intent, according to Tracy Larkin, Councilman Larkin, who had uh, proposed this, was that we start working on a plan as to how to address this. And Barry Crabb committed on the 18th of December to do that. I have recommitted uh, to have a plan by the 18th uh, to see if we can't figure out a way to modify some of the existing ordinances. <laughs> no way was I trying to be offensive to uh, the council, but it, this was the most efficient way to uh, just hold it in abeyance until we can do this other, but at the same time reaffirming the fact that we'll present that plan on the 18th. Okay. Item number two. Item two, ordinance amending chapter 12, article two, section three of the code of ordinance and creating a new division entitled vacant building registration. Uh, we'll be withdrawing this one and there'll be a, a new item brought in on the 18th on the first meeting of, of January okay and that will be uh, given to the council for review in the meantime yes sir and it will be shown as new business on Jan first meeting in January first meeting in January okay. item three Hearing on proposed ordinance rezoning one lot located at 38 Lunner Lane, Hunter Lane from an R100 district to a B2 district. Mr. Tyson. Mr. President, the Planning Commission recommended the rezoning of this property for commercial use. This is a public hearing. Anyone like to speak against this item, please come forward. Seeing none, the public hearing has been held. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd yes. like to do one thing. I think we have the uh, owner's representative here. Are they? And, and I've spoken with him about uh, putting a qualification on this that uh, I'm good with the B2 zoning uh, but I would like to have a qualified that it has no drive up windows and it sells no alcohol there. Okay, you that'll be added to the uh, motion. We need to make a motion to adopt and then a motion to amend. Okay. So I make I make an a motion initially to adopt. Okay. And then you make a motion to amend. And now yeah. I make the motion. To amend. And now I make a motion to amend. Okay. To add restriction yep. of no drive-up windows and no alcohol. Right. That's correct. Okay. Have a motion to amend. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Voting on the main motion. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. The ordinance is adopted as amended. Okay. Item four, hearing on proposed ordinance rezoning three parcels of land containing 30.02 acres on the north side of Selma Highway, 1,100 feet west of Ruhr Road from an R75S district to an M1 district. Mr. Tyson. Mr. President, the Planning Commission recommended the rezoning of this property to allow for warehouse use. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone would like to speak against this item, please come forward. <coughs> Seeing none, declared public hearing has been held. It's part for the council. Thanks. Just be your mm -hmm. motion to sp suspend the rule. And be motion to adopt. And motion to adopt. Just a motion to adopt. On favor, raise your hand. Just, it, it, just a moment. No, I, this order. is all business. Is this oh, no, is the one okay. where Mr. Bollinger recused himself? Yeah, yeah he recused. He left. So, I have motion to adopt. On favor, raise your hand. Made the motion. Ms. Graham. Ms. Graham. Ms. Graham. Okay. On favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Okay. Ordinance is adopted. Item five, hearing on proposed ordinance rezoning two parcels of land on the east side of Norman Bridge Road at 4409 and 4411 Norman Bridge Road from an M1 to an M3 district. Mr. Tyson. Mr. President, the Planning Commission recommended not rezoning this property. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone would like to speak against this item, please come forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, your name for the record? Darnell Bennett. Uh, Mr. Bennett? Yes. And you, have, you own this property? Yes. Okay. Anyone else want to talk against this item? Mr. I'm sure Mr. Benton doesn't want to talk against it. Okay. I declare the public hearing has been held at the the Council. Oh. Mr. Mr. Green, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, we spoke in the uh, work session, and of course, Mr. Bennett and I were going back and forth trying to. <coughs> work everything out and um, as we agreed in the work session uh, I think the uh, consensus is that um, they would like to uh, deny the appeal but nevertheless what I would like to do is to um, hold it over uh, Mr. Bennett and I have talked about uh, getting a fence uh, as another alternative approach 
Uh, should we get the fence? I think that within at that particular point, we could uphold the appeal because the whole thing started with uh, a desire to uh, clean the property up. And I think some of the uh, citizens in the neighborhood was upset about it. So we've been going back and forth. One of the um, um, options was to get a new piece of property, but that fell through. Um, but what I would like to do is to hold this over. Um, how long can we hold it over? Get over the first meeting in January. First meeting in January to either have it completed or at least started or what? Whatever you want. Because I don't think uh, the first meeting in January was that maybe like what? Uh, five weeks from now? Yeah. The 20th? January the 15th. Five weeks. So, uh, how long would you need to either get a fence or get a fence start? I mean, overall, or a time frame, probably be a couple of months wise to get that type of money up to put a fence all the way around. Okay. Uh, I think the council would be satisfied if at least you uh, have shown that you're getting started on the fence. I understand that it may take a minute. I know how big the property is. It could take a minute to get the fence done. But what we want to do is to either, uh, like I said, two months, well, we meet on the 20th, right? That's yeah, that was the middle, the second meeting in February. Yeah, January. January. So that's approximately about uh, five, six, five to six weeks. And I think that at that point, if you come in and show that you've got a contractor and it's either in, in started or that's something that you're going to have uh, completed at that time, that would be great. Mr. President? Yes. One, one other thing that Mr. Green might need to ch talk to him about is bringing in compliance just a little bit. He'd have to still go before the Board of Adjustment. Mm -hmm. So you need to be thinking about that and lining that up as well. Now the Board of Adjustments is what? It's to allow the use of that property for what he's doing. In what? No. He's got to Storing cars on that property. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, I think the issue uh, when we spoke with planning was that I think the city allows 30 days and the state uh, gives you what? 90 days before you can uh, get rid of that car? If you can correct. explain that. Yes, that's correct. I mean, overall, the definition, I have the actually zoning page 54. I don't know if I can use my phone to let someone pick it up. I ask, actually, as a record service, saying my zoning is correct for what I do, but they said I need to change the M3. So I didn't understand how I get in this situation when I've been at the location for eight years. I just only had this problem last year. Can I ask one question? Yes, sir. Mr. Bell. Do you have a license for, for, I mean, I know you have a license to um, trans, uh, for record service, right? Correct. But do you have a license for, for the storage of the cars there? I mean, what do you do with the cars? I mean, in a time frame, different cars go in and out. So I still have the same on the time frame when they come in and the, when the ones that actually, I guess the time go runs out, they do get moved or get redeemed sometime by the owner. So your record service is from that location? Yes. And the issue at odds here is that the cars, meanwhile, the cars are stored there. And uh, some of the citizens I have voiced uh, um, didn't know the way it looked. And at the first, first start, how long have you been there? Like, say, eight years? Yeah, and over the years, years it's, it's gotten busier, and it just expanded to now it's almost at the edge of the street. Are there storage yeah. fees and all that you charge? Yes. That's, that's, I think, what we were talking about is between the abatement license that you have to, to actually tow them and then having a license actually to run a, a storage yard and everything else. I think that's... If the, I the, may interject here, I've just... Uh, Pam McCoy, who runs our um, licensing, he has uh, not only in addition to his towing license, he has a repair and maintenance okay. license as well, which yep. would allow him to have cars, cars on site. Uh, it doesn't say 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. So that, that license would give him, but he's still on a but it's not property, zone not zone property. That, that. That's correct, yes. Okay. Well. So but once again, what we want to do is hold this over, and then um, January 20th, you can come and show progress toward getting the fence, I think. Uh, but else otherwise, we have to hold this up. And then as uh, Councilman Baller just stated, we would then, of course, the Board of Adjustments yeah. will look at it, and then at that point, there will probably be more fees or could possibly uh, force you to have to clean those cars up. But, but Councilman, I think you have a logistics or a timing issue because you would not want him, or I don't think we'd want him to do the, the expense of the fence if in fact the <coughs> movement to uh, M3 was not going to be mm -hmm. uh, agreed to. And so I think it, you might want to make that subject to the fence. 
so that he had to go spend the money for the fence. So you're saying go to the Board of Adjustment? It's, it's the planning well, commission. I'm not. What's before us now? But he's already gone before the planning commission. And, and, and he's now appealing it to and you. And the yes, Board of Adjustments can't override the planning commission. Mm -hmm. Am I right in that? Yeah, yes, you are. Okay. Do you understand? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to give it to you no false. Like, it seems like it's, I'm kind of lost in his third Why don't we get the other people lost? So let, let, let's know. let, for everybody's edification, let's let Tommy Tyson yeah. explain one and three, where he is and why it's appealed and what it would take for him to be in compliance. How about that? Okay. Can you do that? M1 is what the zoning is now, and that allows for a garage, a towing operation. It's the storage of the vehicles that needs to be addressed in the M3. The M3 is similar to M1, but it's the intensity of the use is greater in an M3. You can have more noise. You can have um, a lot of other activity on the ground, open storage. There's just several different things that are allowed in an M3 that aren't permitted in an M1. And the Board of Adjustment has to appeal, they have to appeal for a junkyard if in fact that's what it is. I don't know whether these vehicles are actually- No, it's not a junkyard, it's a record service. I'm sorry? It's, it's a record service. Junkyard. Record service. I'm not sure whether or not the vehicles are turning over. This is the first I've heard about this as far as storage. If- um, Is there, is there limiting M1 to 30 day storage? He could do 30-day storage in M1. He, he, I think it was. But he can't do 90-day in M1. No, he needs. If he's going to stay over there, the if vehicles are going to remain on the property, then it needs to be M3. I think the vast majority of the people in the neighborhood would be satisfied if it was screened. I don't it's know screened, whether he can okay. operate with a I solid fence we, out here, there. Here's, 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 here's what it is. I think the the primary objective really is that the, the, the appearance of the property. So I think if there's a fence, and in, in that case, then if we can't see it or it looks nice, I'm thinking at this point, I would uphold this appeal and then everything go on as is. Because I don't think there's a, a over, overriding need to, in, in other words, he's affecting the community because we're concerned that he's uh, uh, operating as an M1 to, uh, or an M3. This whole thing came about in terms of the, the look of the property. So I'm thinking if we can get a fence, then at that point, I'll be willing to uphold the appeal. And that way he can stay at M1, business go on as, as, as it is. He can't stay at an M1. But what I'm saying is, I, I think that whether he's an M1 or M3 is not, the community is not really concerned about it. And he's been doing this for eight years as an oh, M1. So I don't see any reason why we should impose any undue burden on him if he can deal with the immediate issue that's causing something with the citizens, which is the appearance of the property. Because if that was an issue, then it should have came up long before then. Okay, that's, that's what I would let's like carry to this say. over to the uh, first meeting in January, and then at that point, let's see what kind of progress you've got. And I'll speak with you about any issues with the Board of Adjustments, and whether, you know, I'll get some clarification on my end, and I'll be coming by and talking to you about it, making okay. sure. Wait, I have a quick, can I have Yes, ma'am. The one issue we brought up when we were in this work session is his license, but that is not an issue now. You yeah, said that right, he, right, okay, yeah. so he's licensed good. He's, licensed he's licensed. just not able to operate because of the, way the property is zoned right basically well, that's the only really issue that he has but the property is zoned the beautification of the community yeah, i get that, that. what i'm saying that okay. right now there's a serious concern about the appearance of the property okay that's what i'm primarily concerned about m1 m3 he's been in m1 all these years and it hadn't been an issue it only became an issue where people were concerned about the parents so they thought the way to deal with their parents was making m3 and then put in more stringent requirements on him which would force him okay. that's the objective but, 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 uh, have you ever been fined by the city for anything? Any enough? Have you ever been fined by the city for any violation of anything? No. Well, well, Mayor and uh, Mr. Tyson, I mean, that sounds good, but I don't think we, and I'm not saying anybody's doing it uh, intentionally, we shouldn't give him any false hope because if he is zoned for M1 and he's operating like you said M3. I mean, we can't legitimize, um, and no disrespect to you, we can't make what is right, uh, wrong, right by saying building a fence. 
because the city has an obligation to enforce its, its ordinance. And if they are enforcing the ordinances against other people and are not enforcing the ordinances against you and, and you next to my area I represent, then you're going to have something on your hand that there's unequal treatment of the law. And so what I'm saying is that I know we want to help you out, but we shouldn't give you, and I'm not suggesting uh, Mr. Green is giving you false hope, because what happens, Mr. Mr. If, what happens, what changes if he gets a fence? Is he still operating like an M3? As a, but uh, isn't the M3 a junkyard? And that was the yeah. whole premise of the whole one. Yeah, so see, he's yeah. not operating a junkyard. So therefore, the premise of the whole thing is wrong. That's well, what I'm talking about. Either he's in compliant or he's not in compliant. And if he's not in compliant, let's uphold, let, let's deny, the, uh, let's uphold well, the people. If he's not, if the whole thing was done on the basis that he was a junkyard and we in agreement that it's not a junkyard, then we can uphold this appeal now. Because therefore it was made falsely, if you want to look at the law. Well, that's what we got to operate. But I'm trying to deal we can, with the we can issue, operate. which is the fix. Yeah, but you know something, we have ordinances that we have to, as a city councilman, we just can't come down and, 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 and do something specifically for somebody, for, for somebody as much as I want to. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask the question. It was based off the Mr. wrong Bell, no, no, hold on. Is there any way he can go back to the Board of Adjustment? Yeah, Don't yeah. we give a just he, give parents his he own? He hasn't been to the Board of Adjustment. The Planning Commission. The planning yeah. commission. Planning I know he went to Planning. I, I, I know he went to Planning, yeah. okay? But <laughs> should he have gone to the Board of Adjustment? If it's not a junkyard, he probably didn't need to go. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What's happened is he was at the right zoning as uh, as the M1, but through his good fortune, his business seems to have grown, and that is the intensity that makes it go up to M3. He went to change it to, to make himself right by going to M3, and they denied it for some reason, and I don't know the denial reason. Can you tell us why they denied it? Well, they the they was objected to it. They are, it's the appearance to the of it. I went out there and took some pictures, and I, I know things have changed, but here, there were parts and parts of automobiles as well as automobiles on the right of way and in, 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 in not in a range uh, fashion. You know, it appeared to me, so, it, and I think anybody walking so by the, it, it So to the public, yard. it looks like a junkyard. It looks like a yeah. junkyard, and that's what and that's the problem. Is. So and you got to get it where it doesn't look corner, like Around the corner, there's another, there's a garage, and they've got cars everywhere too. It's the entrance to the na residential neighborhood. But um, that's another issue. And I think the reason why they're complaining about his property because they have a lot more traffic, and uh, you know, it's just that's just what it is. So my objective is to get a fence, and what is zone M1 and M3? Uh, you know. That to me is not as big an issue as the actual uh, eyesore that the property is called. And I think he's, he's, he's willing to meet with, work with me on it. <clears throat> also, we tried to find another location that fell through. I mean, so at this particular point now, uh, I'm just, my, like I said, I'm just trying to make sure the citizens. Well, you, the you, you, first of all, you got to satisfy the neighbors. That's what I'm trying to do. And I think he's willing to satisfy and work with the neighbors okay, too. Okay, well, y'all got, you got the right objective then. So. Let's, let's come back together on but the 20th of next address, month. I want to address the false hope. I don't want the man to go out and spend cash and then come find out. You know, it, it didn't really right. matter. I think you need to work that. I mean, I don't know why, why. He can't go back to Board of Adjustment. He didn't have to. Well, hey, I mean, I, no, he's, 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 he, he's out of compliance yeah. with yeah. M1. Yeah. I Is that think correct? You'd, you'd have to uphold this right here tonight. And then Just kind of like back. the mayor said, subject to fencing in a certain date by a certain date. And if it's not done by a certain date, then I will like vote. Carried over. Let's just carry okay, it over. Okay, let's carry it over. We've got too many, too many questions. Carry it over the 20th of, uh, of January, okay? I'll come by and see you. I need more time than that because it's criminal time. I ain't got time. Look, I ain't hey, got hey, hold on. I'll come. I'll hey, probably need hey, by February or March. Hey, don't, don't, don't make them vote you up home. <laughs> Again, it is what I'm saying. We understand you need more time, possibly, but what we'd like to see is either a, a contract with a, with a, a fence vendor. Uh, but it, get, I understand that clearly, but for the better understanding of what actually I need to be done, do I need to go back to the board or whatever y'all saying, or go back to the planning department? It, I don't, no, no, I don't right now, at this particular point, in terms of this particular, uh, 
uh, ordinance. Uh, I mean, this, this, it's, this thing on the item today, agenda item. We're going to hold it over and vote on it again. It'll be uh, old business on January 20th. But it's, it's January the 15th. It's January the 15th. Okay, my bad. 15th. And, and to make it very clear, what I think I hear the council saying is by January 15th, have a contract with a fence company that will indicate you're going to install the, the fence. Then with that, they can, they could uh, up, not uphold the appeal, but grant the M3. And with M3, he's in compliance and he's shielding the property. Yes. But they probably would say, you're making a good faith effort. You wanted more time. You got a contract. We're going to give you another 30 days. It's probably yeah. what would happen. And that's what I'm saying, because we understand Christmas time and things happen. But at this point, we want to be a commitment to a fence. So the M1 that I'm in now is not compliant for what I do. I need to change over to M3. And once, as, as he stated, the M1 is light industrial. M3 is heavy industrial. It's the intensity of the business, which at this particular point, Dean. But they have record service on M1. That's what yeah. I don't we, we can grant. <laughs> we can grant the M3. I know it, but I don't understand why I need to be. You in. got records, sir. The storage part. Must be a storage problem. It's there. a storage but part. It goes, that goes in and out. It's not like they. But here's what I'm saying. Here's, here's what I'm saying. Whether it's an M1 or M3 with the fence, we'll be working with you. Everything's good. You can move forward. Because okay. whether it's an M3 or M1 really doesn't matter. The point is the fence is the most important part. So you're not holding what the brought us here tonight. 90 mm -hmm. days. So Let's you're not holding them 90 days. You're doing 30 days in and out. That's what no, you're doing. No, it'd be by process 90 days somewhere. 90 days. That's, the problem. I, that's, the, that's the issue yeah. from yeah. what I understood he said. Yeah. I got a question. We, we saw some pictures Arch. on Google Earth and everything else. There's hundreds of cars on that lot. I would. No. No more than probably about 80. <laughs> Okay. Close to close. <laughs> and so all 80 of those turn over in 45, 60 days? The How ones cool? that some of the customer cars that I have that I'm working on on the other side, but the dilemma is the ones that they have in front. That in the ones in front is no more than about 25, 30 cars. Okay. But the ones in the back, how long do they stay on there? Uh, sometimes if I'm working on a customer car, I put those in the back. So they sometimes stay a little longer. It depends on the customer pays their money to get the car fixed. <laughs> And as the car is in the front, that's causing the issue. That's what everybody sees. When he first got there eight years ago, there wasn't that many cars in the front. Slowly over the years, it's creeped. But within that area, but, it's almost about five to six shops. So. Okay. I, I, and I hear you, but we're talking about you. And might be causing the issue with the neighbors, the ones in the front. But at the end of the day, the city's looking at the whole piece of property and not the cars in the front, but the cars in the back and the ones in pieces. They can't see the cars in the back. A, that doesn't different. matter. To the city, we're looking at what you have on your property and what it's zoned for. And if you've got cars in the back far left corner of the property that's been there for a long period of time, that moves you to that M3 versus that M1. You might have a license to be a wrecker or repair service, but if a car's sitting there for over a year, that's not the right license you've got for what's going on there. That's what's going on. And whether it's an M1 or M3 without a fence, it's going to be more inspections and more than likely, uh, you know, force you to move all the cars up front. And I know you don't have any place to put those, so that's why I think the fence is imperative, whether you're M1 or M3. Mr. Mr. Green, so, can you can you put together a plan with the man? Yeah, I'll come talk to by him. The, by the 15th of January, have a plan of which way you go. Yeah, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll meet with him all the time. So I'll, okay, I'll that's when you need a plan by the 15th, okay? Good deal. Thank you. Thanks. Carry it over the 15th of January. Item six, resolution canceling the January 1st, 2019 council meeting. Need a motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Item seven is in compliance and has been withdrawn. Withdrawn. Item eight, pursuant to section 1153B1, Code of Alabama, authorization <coughs> of demolition of unsafe structures at the listed locations. Need a motion to uphold. Move to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Okay. Item nine, resolution declaring, authorizing, and assessing the cost of abatement of public nuisances on various lots. Brandon, you got something to show us tonight? Uh, yes, sir. Um, year to date, we've responded to 1,680 nuisance complaints uh, since, since the last October one yes sir 
since the last council meeting, we responded to uh, approximately 200 and found about half of those in violation. Uh, fortunately, we had a, a good uptick in compliance and we're only asking for approval of 48 properties this evening. You go, would you go, Mike, would you go back up, please? Just better. For a second. That's what, that's the objective, get them to, yes, sir. do it right. Yeah. I, well, it may be the. I'm afraid to say it might be a little Christmas, bit of an, an outlier due to the, Thanksgiving, the holiday schedule and a uh, and, uh, cold snap we recently had. Kill all uh, the grass. But hopefully, hopefully uh, the trend continues. Good deal. Sounds good. Thank you for the information. Need a motion to uh, suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution is adopted. Okay. Ms. Graham, you got a resolution you want to present? Present, I do. Okay. Resolution appointing Mary E. Williams to the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Need a motion to suspend motion the rules? Motion to suspend the rules. Listen. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Motion to adopt. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Resolution good appointment. is adopted. I, I think that lady will do real well there. Good, good. Thank you, Mary. Uh-oh. She brought her husband with her. That's bad. I have put before the council uh, contingency funds for your approval for District 1, $1,600 to Montgomery Sunrise Foundation, $1,000 for Alabama Shakespeare Festival, $500 to Cops for Christ. Anybody else? Uh, District 2, could I do? District 2 has something, okay. Could I do a, a thousand to think big? It's the American Association for Children. Okay, yes, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else? I do. Order. Uh, I need to do uh, $1,350 to the Mercy House. Okay. And 1350 1350 That all? That's it. Okay. Anybody yeah. else? Mr. President. Oh, Mr. Pruitt, I thought I you have were. several, please, sir. <laughs> so we can get up. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, $500. That's going for the parade thing. Brighton Estates Neighborhood Association, $500. And Faith Outreach Ministries, $1,000. Okay. Hey, and that's it. Faith that? Anybody else? Ministries, $1,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got one. Okay. I have. Uh, District 5, uh, $1,000 for the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Is that all? I have just part. been handed one for, for District 3. One thousand dollars to Brubaker Technology. She already has it. High school. Great. Brubaker seven hundred fifty dollars to Brubaker Middle School. It's good. You just approved it. Okay. And you approve these others that they. Okay. That all. That it. Mr. President, is that to the magnet school, Brenda? Miss Brenda. It says Brubaker Technology Magnet That's High School. That's it. Magnet High School. Okay. Anybody else? Need a motion to uphold? Motion to uphold. All in favor, raise your hand. Eight. One abstention. Okay. All right. On the uh, public communication, we need uh, Lisa Hill. 